Good afternoon, dear students. Today we should speak about a very important topic, changes of the eye fundus in general diseases. We, today we concentrate on anterior hypertension, diabetes mellitus, pathology of the kidneys, blood diseases, and pregnant toxicosis. To tell the truth, this information will be very important, not uh, just for ophthalmologists, but also for GP and to, to the doctors of other specialties. So I would like to ask you to pay attention on this information. On this picture, you can see the normal eye fundus, which we um, can see during ophthalmoscopy. This is the disc of the optic nerve. This is the central part of the retina, macular area. These are the vessels. This is vein. This is artery. Artery usually thinner than vein. It's known that the vessels of the retina have cerebral origin and have the same peculiarities. Vascular changes of the retina are interesting not only for ophthalmologists, but also for neurologists and GP. This ophthalmologic picture helps to make conclusion about the condition of the cerebral vessels and the whole vascular system. We start uh, from the arterial hypertension. Changes of the eye fundus in anterior hypertension include four stages. The first stage, hypertensive angiospasm or angiopathy. Uh, this angiospasm is characterized by the constriction of the artery along the whole, whole retina surface without organic changes in arterial wall. The most uh, characteristic uh, feature is the twisting of artery and veins. In the literature, the twisting of the small arterial and venous vessels is called by the name of the author. Twist symptom. In this uh, in this stage, the visual acuity is rather good and visual function doesn't uh, doesn't decrease. On this picture, you can see the examples of the first stage a hypertensive angiospasm or angiopathy. You can see just constriction of the arteries. The, first, the second stage, sorry, hypertensive angiosclerosis. In this uh, stage, we um, can see anatomical changes of the vessel system. As in the first stage, we can see just physiological changes, just as first stage, stage is the um, organic changes. In this stage, uh, the symptoms of Cooper and Sidwes Y appears in the addition to changes from the first stage. The symptom is manifested by the thickening of arterial wall and deposition of cholesterol in it. There are also obliteration of small arterial vessels. In this stage, the arterial venous chasms appear. They were called by the name of ophthalmologists Salus and Gun, who were the first who described this uh, symptom. As the symptoms of arterial venous chasm point out the severe changes in venous system occurrence of venous studies in different degrees. On this stage, you can see organic changes in the vessels 
uh, in some cases we see small hemorrhages. And um, now we should discuss the symptoms of salus and wound, which um, is characterized the second stage of um, hypertensive um, uh, changes of the fundus of the eye in anterior um, hypertension. The first degree, the vein in the place of chiasm constricts and venous phenomena of venous stasis are observed in the distal part. The second degree, the vein constrict some more near the place of chiasm with the artery, conical constriction. Characteristic feature is the occurrence of venous arc. The veins are pletoric, dilatated. The phenomena of stasis are accompanied with the small bleedings along the passage of vessels. The third degree. The vein in the place of chiasm with the atri seem interrupted. Uh, we can see the picture of microthrombosis, bleedings. And you can see the picture of hypertensive angiosclerosis. And fourth degree uh, of the symptoms of salus and wound as a result of previous vascular changes, edema occur on the retina. The visual function in this stage usually also rather good. If the, the edema and hemorrhage are localized in the central macula, the patient may, uh, may uh, have decreased visual function. But usually also in this stage the visual functions are good. Again you can see the picture of angiosclerosis, you can see examples. This is salus wound symptom where we can see that vein looks interrupted. Okay, we should go further. The third stage of the hypertensive retinopathy is the stage of hypertensive retinopathy. In this stage, uh, we can see um, in the retina hemorrhages and edema, not just small hemorrhages like in a, in a stage of angiosclerosis, but he, big hemorrhage and big edema. Look on this picture, you can see hemorrhages, edema, and the third, uh, fourth stage of the, um, uh, of the hi hypertensive retinopathy is a stage of neuropathy. In this stage, um, the process is spreading from the retina to the optic nerve. And um, in this is a severe stage, and uh, we can see during uh, examination of the patient that the disc of the optic nerve becomes edematosus, red, increase in size, and uh, we can see the hemorrhage around the disc. And uh, when we see such picture, we should say that it's a very uh, severe uh, arterial hypertension. Look on this picture, you can see changes not only in the retina but also in an optic disc. You can see edema of the optic disc, optic nerve disc. You can see how does this disc prominent in a vitreous body. 
here also hemorrhage edema the vessels the vessel irritated look again the examples you can see here the changes on the retina but also you can see changes in the optic uh, disc you even can see the borders of the optic disc Uh, in this um, stage, visual functions, of course, are affected. Visual acuity decreases. Visual fields are constricted. Uh, we can see different scotoma. Look very severe picture. Okay. So um, we have already finished. Um, discussion of the changes of the eye fundus, fundus in anterior hypertension and now we should speak about changes of the eye fundus in diabetes mellitus. I you know I think that diabetes mellitus nowadays uh, like a non-infection epidemic. More and more people suffer from diabetes mellitus. And 90% of the diabetic patients have problem with uh, the retina, have changes in the retina. And in Western country, diabetic retinopathy is a leading cause of blindness and visual disability. Um, let's discuss the factors influencing on uh, diabetic retinopathy. Uh, the first duration of diabetes, of course, types of diabetes mellitus. Uh, usually, um, we can observe uh, diabetic retinopathy uh, rather often in female than in male. Arterial hypertension, glucose level compensation, of course, if um, we see normal. Um, Normal compensation, the risk of the uh, diabetic, uh, diabetic retinopathy decreased. Uh, what happened in a retina in case of diabetic uh, retinopathy? This, on this picture, you can see healthy retinal capillary. These are um, capillaries in the diabetic retinopathy. Some capillary is closed, uh, some um, dilated and we see like a micro aneurysm. And here you can see that area is not uh, received nutrition. This area are ischemic area. And this ischemic area produced vascular endothelial growth factor. And this factor is the main impulse for neovascularization and macular edema. Rather difficult, uh, difficult way, but you should uh, um, remember just in general. Okay, we um, just uh, <laughs> revise pathogenesis of diabetic retinopathy and uh, uh, now we should speak about clinical manifestation of diabetic retinopathy. Classification. We have two stages, non-proliferative and proliferative diabetic retinopathy. Non-proliferative diabetic retinopathy is characterized by micronutrients, retinal hemorrhages, heart exudates, retinal edema, cotton wool spot, venous abnormalities, bleeding, snooping and dilatation, and intraretinal microvascular anomalies. On this picture, you can see examples of uh, um, non-proliferative diabetic region. But you can see here hemorrhages, you can see um, heart exudates, the same. 
cut exudates, hemorrhages. Good. Some more examples of the fungus of the eye. You can see again hemorrhages. You can see uh, how looks vein dilated. Here you can see hemorrhages, micronecrasis. Again, hemorrhages, heart exudates, cotton wool exudates. A lot of hemorrhages. This picture you can see heart exudate, some hemorrhages. This is the central part of the retina, edema, exudates, cotton wool spots. Again. Okay. Mm -hmm. Proliferative diabetic retinopathy is um, mm, characterized by the appearance of neurovascularization. Uh, we can also see petrol hemorrhages. So neurovascularization of the retina and petrol hemorrhages are the main signs of proliferative diabetic retinopathy. Look, look on this example, you even can't see the optic nerve here, you can see proliferative tissue. And I will show you some pictures. Look, proliferative tissue. Again, here optic nerve, but you can see new vessels and proliferative membrane. Here also, we can just think that Something here must be the optic nerve, and here you can see proliferative tissue directly in the center of the macular area, and this is a very severe situation. Uh, in, we can suggest that this patient has rather um, bad visual functions. Again, Vitreous hemorrhages, that's why we can't see fundus properly. Again, proliferative tissue near the optic nerve. Big hemorrhage. Well, here um, you can see the big hemorrhage from new vessels very severe situation because um, this hemorrhage is affected at the macula, the central area and the patient in this uh, situation can't see in the center. Mm -hmm. I have already mentioned uh, that 90% uh, of the people with diabetes mellitus have diabetic retinopathy. That's why the treatment, uh, management, diagnostic of the diabetic retinopathy is very important. If in a case of arterial hypertension, we should just to control um, arterial hypertension to uh, stop uh, uh, hypertensive retinopathy. In the case of diabetic retinopathy, we should to treat um, such patient aggressively. So, of course, in the treatment of diabetic retinopathy, the first place strict metabolic control of blood glucose and uh, other um, uh, and uh, other metabolic uh, disorders. Um, if uh, the first, the second, uh, the second place, it's a photocoagulation of the ischemic areas. 
Uh, third place is a surgical treatment when we see the severe proliferative retinopathy, uh, when we see vitreous hemorrhages. Rather new treatment, anti-VGF uh, therapy, when we inject uh, um, some medicine directly in a vitreous body. Of course, metabolic therapy, when we add uh, different vitamins uh, and other, other medicines which can improve the nutrition of the, of the retina. Mm. I would like to show you some pictures. Here you, you can see Uh, the edema of the macular area. Here you can see uh, laser coagulation. Oh, on this picture you can see the examples of the fluorescent angiography, which is one of the most important methods of uh, diagnostic uh, uh, diabetic retinopathy. This method helps us to diagnose um, diabetic retinopathy if um, if there is um, proliferation or not, and we can check the effect of um, of laser calculation, previous laser calculation, and if it's necessary, maybe to add uh, coagulants, or um, we should stop the coagulation. Also, we can um, see the severity of the macular edema. No, to tell the truth, when we receive the um, inhibitors of vascular and the telial growth factor, the effectiveness of the treatment of diabetic retinopathy improve. Uh, these anti-VHF medicines help us to decrease uh, neovascularization, to decrease uh, macular edema. On these pictures, you can see it just uh, uh, without contrast, it's uh, also without contrast, it's just a uh, oh, black and white picture. And here you can see um, the picture when we um, inject the contrast towards and geography. Okay, so um, now we should discuss the changes of the eye fundus in the kidney diseases. But before we start, I would like uh, again to pay attention that you should um, you should uh, examine patient with diabetic mal mellitus very, very carefully. If you, for example, GP and patient doesn't have any problem with the vision, you should every year send uh, such patient to ophthalmologist. If the patient uh, uh, has uh, the problems with, uh, um, with the vision or, uh, or um, has non-proliferative diabetic retinopathy, every uh, three, six months you should uh, send such patient to ophthalmologist or if the ophthalmologist maybe prescribe another, um, um, uh, another date. So, uh, don't forget about diabetic retinopathy and try to send such patient to ophthalmology in time to, um, because we should save to the patient his vision. And nowadays we have opportunity to save uh, vision to our patient with diabetic mellitus. Laser coagulation, anti-VGF therapy will help, uh, will help us to to save vision to this patient. Okay, so we should go further. Changes of the eye fundus in in the kidneys diseases. Uh, the most frequent changes of the eye fundus are observed in chronic nephritis. In the beginning of the process, the changes of the retina arteries are observed uh, that refers to the first stage of retinopathy. 
in the advanced cases, sclerotic changes are found. This picture is much more severe than the picture of hypertensive retinopathy. Uh, in addition to sclerotic changes in the retinovascular system, a profuse exudation appears. The developed stage of retinopathy is characterized by the constriction of vessels. Arteries and vein becomes uh, of equal um, caliber. Besides the edema of the whole surface of retina, breathing secure mainly in peripheral zones. In the central part of the retina, in the macular area, uh, we can see uh, the um, exudates looking like a star. Good look of these pictures. You can see different soft exudates, hemorrhage, and in regular area, we can see the star. And uh, this is the typical picture for kidneys retinopathy. In progression of uh, kidneys retinopathy, the disc of the optic nerve also is involved in the process. We can, during ophthalmoscopy, we can see that the disc of the optic nerve uh, is edematosis. We can see the great edema of the optic nerve. Also, we can see uh, a lot of hemorrhage on the surface of the retina. The stage of retinopathy and neuroretinopathy uh, correspond to the severe clinical manifestation in the kidneys. Look on this picture, you can see changes in vessels, you can see the star in the macular area, and you can see a edema on the disc of the optic nerve. And so, if you see such patient with a severe Kidney retinopathy, you should immediately send such patient to GP. Okay, so we should we should discuss the changes of the find eye fundus in rheumatism. Uh, usually, in a um, inflammatory uh, inflammatory systemic diseases. Uh, we can see it, inflammation of the uveal tract, vascular changes, vascul vasculitis, and perivasculitis are uh, often appear in rheumatic patients. During ophthalmoscopy, we can see the appearance of small perivascular moves, occurrence of exudates of the blood form elements in the retinal tissue. Inflammatory process may spread over the whole vessel and uh, cause severe panvasculitis. So we should discuss the changes of the fundus of the eye in the blood diseases. No, at first we should speak about look in the Leukemic retinopathy. Leukemic retinopathy is char characterized by the pale and orange fundus background with the dilated veins. In later stages, grayish white lines may be seen along the course of the vein. Arterioles become pale and narrow, retinal hemorrhages with a white center are very common. But look on this picture, this is a typical picture of the leukemic 
retinopathy, especially retinal hemorrhages with white center. Anemic retinopathy rather often appear in patient with a um, low hemoglobin. In anemia, retinal changes usually occur when hemoglobin levels falls uh, by 50% and uh, <clears throat> and consistently present when below 35%. Anemic retinopathy is characterized by pale arteriosis and pale general background of the fundus of the eye. Retinal veins are dilatated. Superficial retinal and parietal hemorrhages may be seen. Look. Well, fundus. And in the end of the lecture, we should discuss changes of the eye fundus in pregnancy toxicosis. Um, in other literature, you can see the name of this disease, toxemia of pregnancy, pregnancy-induced hypertension. Pregnancy-induced hypertension uh, is more often we can see in a English um, literature. So a lot of the names, but it is the same diseases when uh, we see in a um, pregnant women, we see arterial hypertension and uh, um, edema and um, um, changes in the vascular system. One of the first scientists who studied the fundus of the eye in pregnant women was Leibert. In 1859, he called the affection of the retina in pregnancy albuminuritic retinitis. In 1979, Houdin was one of the first scientists reported his opinion that ophthalmoscopic changes of the retina in albuminuritic retinas are connected with the damage of vascular system. Look, some words about um, the cause of the changes in a, um, uh, in the retina vascular system. Pregnancy, usually we call that it's not a disease, but in some cases, then pregnancy induced hypertension is a disease of a known etiology characterized by rise blood pressure, proteinuria, and generalized edema. Retinal changes are liable to occur in the condition when blood pressure rises above 160 over, <clears throat> over 100 and are marked when blood pressure rises above 200 over 130. Uh, rather often, uh, their specialists, gynecologists and obstetrics ask to uh, ophthalmologists to um, watch the fundus of the eye um, because we have already mentioned that the changes of the, um, of the retina vessels uh, um, correlate with the changes of the um, brain vessels and uh, heart vessels. Early changes uh, consist of narrowing of the nasal arterioles followed by generalized narrowing. Severe um, persistent spasm of vessels 
causes regional hypoxia characterized by parents of cotton wool spots and superficial hemorrhages. If pregnancy is left to continue, further progression of retinal party occurs rapidly. Retinal edema and exudation is usually marked and may be associated with macular star, like in the kidneys retinopathy. Uh, um, in the severe cases, may, we can see flat macular detachment. Rarely, it may be complicated by bilateral exudative retinal detachment. What should we do in the retinopathy in the pregnancy with hypertension? Changes um, in the retinal usually are reversible and disappear after the delivery, no, um, uh, unless organic vascular disease is established. In pre-organic stage, when um, patients respond well to conservative treatments, the pregnancy may uh, justify the continued under close observation. Uh, however, the advent of hypoxia retinopathy when we see the soft exudates, retinal edema, and hemorrhages should be considered as indication or termination of pregnancy. Otherwise, moment with vision loss or even loss of life of both mother and uh, baby may occur. I would like to you to thank you for your attention. I hope this lecture will be useful for you in your uh, general practice. Hope to see you in our um, classes, in our practical classes, and we will continue to see the uh, pictures of the eye photos and discuss um, ophthalmological problems. Thank you and goodbye.